Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Bishop Andre Thomas, and we are live on School of Greatness. I have with me two of my spiritual daughters and elders in our ministry, Pastor Winita Birchwood. She is one of she's a pastor of one of our satellite churches, and we have Pastor David Lickup, who works in the office and also works in our business. So say hi, Pastor Winita. Say hello to our audience today. Hi, Bishop, and hi, DVA, and friends of DVA. I'm excited to join you today. I'm excited for the teaching that Bishop has for us. And I know it's been, it's a difference because you've been behind the camera, different screen, but to be here this afternoon with you, Bishop, is a pleasure. It's a real pleasure to have you. Real pleasure, and Pastor Deidre, Good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to be here again. I hope you are as excited as I am to join on this second part on these divine relationships. So stay tuned, share with a friend. If you know one of your friends need to hear this, if you know you need to know more about your divine relationships, stay tuned and take a pen and some paper and take some notes. Amen, amen, amen. And I want you to ask the questions. Pastor Davey is going to be here just to process your questions. Okay? We are here just to answer your questions. Wow. So we're going to start in about three minutes. So give you three minutes. Put on your Facebook feed. Put on your watch party. Let's let the world know that we're talking about divine relationships. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, we see Brother Shawnee Yad, Minister Tiffany, Sister Kim. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I'm glad that you have joined us today. Today is going to be life-changing as we dive deeper into divine relationships. Divine relationships. Amen.
We'll be starting in one minute's time. Hello, this is Bishop Andre Thomas, and we are excited that you have joined us today on our Facebook Live, that School of Greatness, where we teach the Word of God on how to move from bondage to greatness. And in these sessions, our dedication is to share the wisdom of God. One of the mandates of this ministry is to take the wisdom of God to visionaries all around the world. And uh, you were made in the image and likeness of God and your heavenly father is a visionary. And what a visionary means is a visionary is somebody who sees the shape of a future that he wants to create and takes and goes through a process to create it. So a visionary is somebody who sees the future that they want to create and they go through a process to create it. So we see the heavenly father, he had a vision for the heavens and the earth. He had a vision to remake earth. And the Bible says that he went through a process of day one, day two, day three, day four, and on day six, man was made in the image and likeness of God. So this is how God does and creates his vision. And because we are made in the image and likeness of God, we also create the future that heaven has for us using the same method. Now, one of the reasons why divine relationships is so important is because the Bible says that when God made man, he said, let us make man. So man was made by a relationship. So I just want everyone, I want Pastor Deidre, Pastor Juanita, to just say hi to the people once again, and then we're going to go into the subject matter for today. So Pastor Juanita, just say hi to the people once again, and also uh, Pastor Deidre. Amen. Hi, good afternoon to everyone that are, that are watching this afternoon. I'm sure you're excited. We've been getting a lot of food thought with these sessions with our bishop, and I know that you're hungry and you're thirsty for more today. So as we welcome everyone to share this session today, don't be selfish with this information. I'm sure you can find tons of people you can share this message with. So enjoy. Good afternoon again, everybody, and thank you for joining us. We know that you could be anywhere, but you are here today and you are indeed in store for a treat today. Wisdom is going to be dropped. Gems from heaven is going to be dropped today. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's go over the key things that we shared. Yesterday, one of the key things that I shared yesterday is that in order for new levels of life to be new dimensions to be activated in your life, there needs to be vertical alignment, which is your alignment with God, which is your worship alignment. There has to be internal alignment, which is you aligning with your mission, you aligning with what God created you to be. And then there has to be horizontal alignment. Horizontal alignment is alignment with relationships. Now, have you noticed that in the making of man, there was a quorum that was required to make man? Because for anything that is made on the earth, whew, for anything that is created on the earth, there has to be a quorum for that creation. What do you mean by quorum? Now, in parliament, before legislations are taken or enacted or enforced, before they become law, that it can go through various committee stages where various committees can discuss them, but before it is ratified as law, there has to be a quorum. That means there has to be at least two quarters of the parliament there. 
before it can be voted on to become a law. So that's called a quorum. You also see the same thing for board meetings. Before policy can be created or implemented or enacted or enforced within a company where the board of directors, there has to be what? A quorum. Now in the same thing, it's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. This is a divine principle because when God was making man, he said he did not say, let us make light. <laughs> He did say, let us make the sun, the moon, and the stars. He did not say that. He did not say, let us make the fish. But when it came to man, there had to be a call. And he said, let us make man. Because man required the participation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They both had to be involved in the making of man. That was the core required to make man. Now, there are things in your life that you can just do by yourself. The Bible says the spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. So the things in your life you can just do by yourself. But there are things that when it comes to a new dimension, when it comes to a new creation, that there are others that need to participate in this creation because they are participants in the destiny. Because the way destiny is structured is that there is a mutual participation of all of us in each other's destiny to create God's grand picture. Because destiny is fulfilled by the law of the jigsaw puzzle in which every, nobody is the entire picture. Every person is a piece in the jigsaw puzzle. And for your part of the jigsaw puzzle to have any significance, you need to have the other parts around your jigsaw. I used to make jigsaw because my mother was a jigsaw addict and we should buy jigsaw puzzles, 10,000 pieces. <clears throat> and in the evening, my mother and myself and my sister would work on the jigsaw. That's how we bonded. Uh, my mother was a wonderful, she was just so excellent at bonding. And, uh, and we would just, sit together in the evening and, 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 and do the jigsaw and she'll teach us about life as we did the jigsaw puzzle together. So I understand about jigsaw puzzles. So let me take you to the scripture and then we're gonna deal with some questions that came from uh, yesterday. So let's turn to book of Romans. The book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, let's go there. Romans chapter 12. Okay, Romans chapter 12, and it says from verse 4, for us, we have many members in one body, but not all members do have the same function, so we've been many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. So it says we are individually members one of, of another. So when, what it means, it means when God made you, he made you in connection with another person. It did not say, now you are a member of the body of Christ, but you're also a member connected to another member. So a lot of people think I am just a member of the body of Christ, it's just me. No, when God made you, he made you in a, with a group of people together who are interconnected. So this interconnection existed before time began. So this interconnection existed before time began. And because this interconnectedness existed before time began, when you come into time, you need to find your connections that you are connected with before time began. Otherwise, the things that God wants to make through you on earth will never happen. Because it requires those group of people around you to make that. Oh. That's the law of the relationship quorum. So there's a relationship quorum, a divine relationship quorum around your life that you need. That's number one. Then I share with you on the law of relationship foreknowledge. There are people that you meet, and when you meet them, a body of information is downloaded into your spirit about them. 
there is a foreknowledge you have about them because in eternity, your spirit knew their spirit. And when you meet them, foreknowledge of them is downloaded in your spirit. So you in intuitively know how to relate with them. And obviously that grows, but there's an intuition that's given to you to relate with them because they are what? A divine connection. Amen? So let's get some comments from Pastor Juanita on this. And then Pastor Deidre, you can, you can read some of the questions that we had from, from yesterday. And then I will answer those questions and then move into the new subject for today, which is going to be a blockbuster revelation. Okay. So, Pastor Juanita, what are your thoughts on that? Yes. That is so interesting, Bishop, because in the sense that even before, just like how God um, knew all of us, he wrote a script concerning us. He also wrote a script concerning the divine relationships that God had for us. And to think that we need those people. You know, we always hear a term saying, no man is an island. And sometimes people are very selfish in the way how they approach destiny. They think they can only get to that place that God has called them to if they operate in isolation. But we recognize that unity is key. And we need to unify with those people that God has ordained for our lives in order to produce what God has called us to. We are not perfect beings and every single individual that is placed into our life has those specific gems, those specific qualities that we lack. So in order for us to step forth, we need to connect with those people. And God put them there for us. It's just a matter of finding them and discerning them. And that's very interesting to recognize that. Sometimes maybe there, but you may not necessarily recognize that they are, but asking God to give you wisdom of who those people are and connecting with them. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome. Okay. Now, okay, Pastor Deidre, what are the questions that we have from yesterday? So yesterday we had a few questions. And that first question is, what causes a person to not discern a spiritual relationship? Wow, that's a great question. That's because there's a particular law that is, is not operating in their lives. Now, there's a law called the law of recognition. This spiritual law of recognition, so I want you to remember the laws I've taught you. I've taught you on the law of death of relationship foreknowledge. I've taught you on the law of relationship core. Those are two laws. Now, there's the third law. I want you to remember the laws. The third law now is the law of recognition. Now, this law applies to relationships, applies to all types of things. Now, the law of recognition says that many things that come to you in life are common. But among the common, you must discern the uncommon. So the fact that you're walking down the street, you're going to meet hundreds of people in a day. Like today, I left home and I came to work. Along my way, I met hundreds of people. Those, those passing of those people were common. But among those people that I met, there are some in which we have a destiny link. We have what a destiny link. There is a link in destiny. There is a link in destiny. So I believe one of the reasons why people don't discern destiny relationships is because they don't know they exist. And they don't know it is their responsibility to discern it. And they don't know how to discern it because they judge people based on their cover. You see, I learned one thing that God's golden bars sometimes call laptop and brown paper bags. So a person can have gold for you, but it's wrapped in a paper bag. Now, in the natural, you judge a book by its cover. In the spirit, you don't dare judge a book by its cover. <laughs> because Paul said, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. So in the realm of the spirit, do not dare because God, the Bible says, God does not look at, at the appearance, 
God looking at the heart. So when it comes to destiny relationships, they, you don't know them by the cover. You know them by the content. And sometimes God can camouflage what he's put in somebody with the cover he gives them. Now look at one of the greatest, right now, the most influential prophet in the world is Prophet Shepherd Bushiri, Major One, my spiritual father. The father of the prophetic movement right now in the earth is Prophet, the most senior prophet in the world is Prophet Libarenjo, okay, who is my granddad in the spirit. Now, Prophet Major One, he does not have an impressive physical appearance. He's not tall. He does not have stage presence, but his contents, hey, what the man contains, he contains a neutron bomb in the spirit <laughs> for his generation. That's what he contains. Because the anointing on his ministry has produced the fastest growing church in the history of church growth in our generation. My, my, my. I mean, what a dynamic ministry. And not only that, he has a financial anointing. And two years ago, his company was listed at over $5 billion in assets. So he is, he is anointed like a Solomon and he's anointed in the prophetic like Elijah. So it's a combination of an Elijah and a Solomon put in one cent of this generation. <laughs> Okay, that's my spiritual father. So, in wealth, in influence, and in power and anointing, Jesus. So, yet God put that package not in an impressive package. He put it in a small package. So, in the realm of the spirit, you do not judge a book by its cover. You judge a book by the contents because the cover could be camouflaged. Woo! So that's one of the reasons. Okay. Okay, next question. Can a relationship alignment you missed be restored? It can be restored. Now, this is a very good question. This is a very excellent question. Now, there are two kinds. That's why I like questions. There are two kinds of divine relationships. There are situational relationships and they're what? Permanent relationships. The situational relationships, they're permanent relationships. Now, let's talk about permanent relationships. Call of mass. Woo! In fact, let's just give you a concept because I saw something in the spirit that I forgot to share. For you to understand that God ordained our relationships before time began, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Malachi prophesied that before Jesus comes, the Lord will send a particular relationship that will make way for Jesus. And he said he will send somebody in the spirit and power of Elijah, which was who? Jesus, which was who? John. So there was a prophecy made that a man will be born that will carry the spirit and power of Elijah, who would prepare the way for Jesus. And this man would participate in the destiny of Jesus. And then Jesus himself participated in the destiny of the twelve apostles. So you see that divine relationships are already scripted before time. Now, when they come now into the realm of time, there are two types of divine relationships. There are divine relationships that are situational, or I call them scaffolding divine relationships. And then there are divine relationships that are permanent divine relationships. What is a scaffolding divine relationship? A scaffolding divine relationship is a relationship that is more of a connector. So I'll give you an example that when Joseph was in the prison, he formed a relationship with the butler and the baker. And he told the butler to remember him when he, came, when he was restored back to Pharaoh's palace. And so the butler was restored and the baker was killed. The butler forgot him. But when Pharaoh had a dream 
the butler remembered and the butler mentioned the name of who? Joseph to Pharaoh. So the butler was a connector. And so the butler was a connector. And when the butler connected Joseph with Pharaoh, we never hear anything about the butler anymore because the butler was a scaffolding relationship. What is scaffolding? Scaffolding is there to help you build something and after you build it, it's, it's gone. Then you have permanent relationships. The relationship of Pharaoh and Joseph was a permanent relationship. But the relationship between Joseph and, and the butler was a scaffolding or temporal relationship. They had a function, and once the function is done, it's gone. So there are people who the church you started with was a scaffolding relationship, and its purpose is done. You now need a church to have a permanent relationship with for your destiny. There are people who you connected with. They are scaffolding. So you need to discern the difference. Now, if you break a connection with a scaffolding relationship, you may not be able to restore it because the time may have lapsed. So example, if the dream came to Pharaoh and the butler chose not to connect, I mean, Joseph with Pharaoh, that relationship is over. Because obviously by connecting Joseph with Pharaoh, when Joseph came into power, I'm sure Mr. Butler had some special favors, but the relationship was then over because the use had expired. So those relationships have an expiry date. And if the purpose of the relationship is not done within the expiry date, the relationship, there's nothing to restore. But if it's a permanent relationship, it can be restored. Now, it can be restored on two, only on one frequency. It can be restored if both people are in line with the purposes of God. Because divine relationships cannot happen if two people are not in divine alignment. There was a divine relationship between Samuel and Saul. They were supposed to work together for Saul to become, to stay king of Israel and then Jesus be born through his lineage. But that did not happen. And the relationship between Samuel and Saul broke down and God took his favor of Saul and that relationship could never be restored. Pastor Wania, I want you to share on that. Wow, my God. That, that is very interesting, the different dimensions of relationships that you have, the scaffolding ones and the permanent ones. And even what comes to my mind is the fact that sometimes people may treat a scaffolding relationship as though it's a permanent relationship. And that's a problem because sometimes we don't know when the time end for that particular relationship, but yet we want to continue it when it has run its course. And I think a lot of people need to recognize that there's certain relationships that need to come to an end especially if they're not to take you to the full length of destiny. And so that's very, very important. And one of the things that you also experience the fact of alignment, that even for example, if it was a case scenario where there was a breaking apart of a permanent relationship, that even how it can be restored, you have to be in alignment. Both parties need to be in alignment. And if you're operating outside of alignment with, with God's will for both of your lives, there will be no form of connection. Therefore, there'll be no progress going forward. So alignment here again comes into play even in this scenario where it's so important to be aligned with God's agenda for your life and both parties involved in relationship need to come together in alignment and be fully centered in Christ. And that is so important. But definitely the whole concept of recognizing when the ending of that relationship, those scaffold the relationship, they need to come to an end. So yeah, very important. In fact, one of the things you saw is that Samuel spoke to, to Saul and said, this is the last day you will ever see me. Because he knew after Saul's rebellion that the relationship was over. Because Saul, God had withdrew the anointing from him and he knew that 
because the relationship, divine relationships, are to fulfill divine purpose. It's, it's example. It's what the Bible says. It says, "For well, this cause shall a man leave his mother and father." So marriage is for a purpose. You see, if you have a marriage and there's no purpose greater than a marriage, uh, the marriage would not have fulfillment. She so said, for this cause. Now, whenever God brings people together, it's for cause. So if you have disconnected from the cause, so Saul disconnected from the cause, and because Saul disconnected from the cause, there was no purpose for the relationships, and God replaced him with David. So if you disconnect from the purpose, the relationship cannot be restored. <clears throat> That's a really excellent question. Okay, Pastor Wanita, any other questions? No. Okay, Pastor David. Um, not. We have two more questions quickly. Can a person have true alignment with God if they are not aligned with their divine relationships and vice versa? Well, okay. Very true. You can have no. Uh, because the Bible says, how can you say you love God and do not love man? So in order to be truly aligned with God, there has to be a vertical alignment, which is an alignment with, with uh, in worship. There has to be an internal alignment in which you align with your design. I've talked on that. If you and your design are having a civil war, you and you will not be in total alignment with God. So there's a vertical alignment. There is an internal alignment with who God has designed you to be. If you're still getting envious and jealous, if you're still uh, unsure of who you are, that means your your alignment is not perfect. You need to, you know, like how you take a screw or something is set, or you you are trying to like I I have a tripod here that actually has a camera. There's a time when you put the tripod and it's set. So when the tripod is set, it's set. The tripod is set. But you can have a scenario in which the legs are not set. So if you're not set, there's a problem in your internal alignment. You, you still will not be perfectly aligned with the Lord. And then with your horizontal alignment, of this season of your life. Now, as I said, there are people who they're going to be in all seasons of your life until they leave the earth. In fact, they are your most valuable relationships because they're permanent relationships and you need to discern them. And then there are people who they are scaffold relationships. Okay, so that's key. Hope that answers the question. Bishop, I have a question. Yes. Okay, so if you're saying that there are specific divine relationships that God has preordained for you, could it be, okay, you talk about alignment. If that particular person or those particular persons don't align with God, will they, in a sense, be replaced by other backup relationships that God would have had in place in case that person did not, you know, fully align? Yes, because if you stay in purpose, if you stay in purpose, people can be replaced if you stay in purpose. Mm -hmm. But if you break purpose, because this we see it with David. We see with David, Samuel, and Saul, God had ordained a relationship between the prophet and the king who would lead Israel. Saul was the man and Samuel was the man, okay? Saul was the mentor. Saul was the king and Samuel was a mentor and the one who actually brought the covering. When the relationship broke, the Bible says that Samuel mourned and mourned and mourned. And the Bible said that God had to come to Samuel and say, Samuel, how long would you mourn over Saul? Arise and go anoint, go to the house of Jesse and I have reserved a king for me there. So his heart was broken because that connection had been, had been broken. So he felt it, but God replaced. God replaced, God replaced. And, uh, but that can only happen if, if Samuel had lost connection with God, he wouldn't have got the replacement. 
So he had to be in fellowship mm. with God for Saul to be replaced with David. And what a wonderful replacement he was. Okay. Amen. Amen. So we're now ready to go forward. Amen. Okay. So we have dealt with all the questions. Amen. And we're now going to go into the subject matter for today. But I know that many of you love these questions because you learn so much from the questions. So make sure you put your questions on Facebook. This is a subject that I know it's a subject that there's very little knowledge about, but the Spirit of God has spoken to me to bring depths of revelation concerning this subject. Now, when the Lord was giving me this subject, he gave me two visions. The first vision was I saw a woman who had acne on her face, a lot of acne on her face. And the acne distorted the beauty of her face. And the Lord told me, the angel of God told me that the reason why the woman had acne on her face is because she refused to relate with the people that had the knowledge and grace to remove the acne. She preferred to say, Father, help me remove this acne and try to do it on her own. When God had given people in her world of influence that had that knowledge, and the Lord told me, he said that there are many blemishes in people's lives. And because they refused to relate with other people, those blemishes would not be removed. So I shared on that yesterday. If you have not watched, if you have not listened to yesterday, you need to follow up with yesterday because we're building layer upon layer. You cannot just listen to one particular series, one particular teaching. You need to start from Monday because this is a curriculum. I am a wisdom apostle and I teach my curriculum. The Lord put that on me. So there's a curriculum that I'm teaching you on wisdom, on divine relationships. Okay, so this is module two. <laughs> so module two. So module two is this. Now, I was taken into a vision. And when I was taken into a vision, I saw a car. And I saw this car. And this car was fully loaded. Engine was working. Had fuel, but it had no tires. It had what? no tires. And the angel told me, he said the relationships, divine relationships are the wheels of destiny. They're the wheels of destiny. He said if your person does not have the four categories of divine relationships, they will not make much progress in destiny. They could have the engine power, they could have the seats power, all of that could be in place. But if they do not have an alignment in these four areas, they will not make more progress in the destiny. And the angel of the Lord showed me that the first wheel was a category of relationships called mentors, hoverers, and developers. So the first category of relationship, the first wheel, is people who mentor you, develop you, and cover you. So those are covering relationships. And we're gonna talk about that. The next wheel, he said, is the wheel of people who are your supporters. They support you in destiny. So these are your destiny supporters. They provide comfort, they provide encouragement, they provide, they, 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 they provide the oxygen of help, they support you. They stand with you. So these are the second type of relationships. The third type of relationships are your colleagues. These are the people that you work with. These are the people that you work with. You work with them. Because when God calls you, there is a set of people around you that you have to work with and you participate in their destiny, they participate in your destiny for the destiny to be actualized. And then you have the fourth group 
These are the customers of your destiny. These are the people who you are sent to. It could be a person, it could be people, it could be a small group of people. So the people you're sent to, which you're signed to that person, or you could sign to people in general, okay? Aaron was assigned to Moses. Moses was assigned to Israel, okay? So there are people who are assigned to. So, the, so the, you don't understand that. So these are the four categories of relationships. Now, if people do not have these four in their life, woo, destiny is not fulfilled. So I'm going to start by explaining the first type of relationship because that's the first wheel. So a lot of people don't have the first wheel because the first wheel is where you have the first will is with Samuel. Samuel had the anointing to activate the king out of Saul, to activate the king out of David. That's a Samuel relationship. And a Samuel relationship provides protection, it provides covering, it provides mentorship. Now, so that's a Samuel type relationship. It will also be a spiritual father. So it's broken up into a spiritual father and mentors. So I have a business mentor, He's not my spiritual father, but I also have a spiritual father. Okay, so, so you have um, that dynamic. So I want to talk to us today about the first wheel. We, I, I want to make sure people understand the four wheels. And I want to talk today about the first wheel, okay? Because the first wheel, without the first wheel, your destiny will not be activated. Some people say, well, I just need God to activate my destiny. Okay. Jesus needed the prophet John for his destiny to be activated. And so Jesus had John who activated his destiny when he was baptized in the river Jordan and the heavens opened. So these people have the ability to open your heavens, open the gates of your destiny, open the gates of your understanding because they're able to accelerate you and they're not your supporters. They do not speak to you like supporters. They are there to change you from level to level. Now, I want to talk about two things right now. There are people who expect one person in their life to play all four roles. It is impossible. And they expect all four people to speak to them the same way. It's impossible. If somebody who is assigned to, to, to be a Samuel to you, or to be a mentor to you, is not going to speak to you like somebody who is your supporter. The roles are different. Hallelujah. Pastor Anita. <laughs> Very interesting. It is so true. And it, it is so important to recognize the role of a spiritual father, a mentor, the God has placed in your life. To, because the thing is, they have gone before you. They can see the road and path ahead of you. And so they know what it will take for you to come into alignment with that thing. So they are there to give you wisdom that you don't even understand as of right now. And sometimes we need to humble ourselves and listen to them. They have so much wisdom that is there. And oftentimes, he says, as you were mentioning, in fact, that sometimes we mix a relationship, we want them to be our supporters. I know we haven't gotten into that as yet, but they are there in a sense to whip us into shape. They are there to draw and to pull the very greatness that's on the inside of us outward. So it has to, it takes a level of digging and molding and shaping, just like our Heavenly Father does with us. He grinds us sometimes, we think that we grind it powder, but it is really there because he, he loves us and he wants to bring the best out of us. And we got to really discern who our spiritual mentors are around us and not necessarily, in a sense, despise them when they give us godly and loving rebuke. So that is very interesting to understand the dynamics of that particular relationship. Very, 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 very important. Very, very important. You see, a lot of people, you see, without that relationship, your destiny will not be open. 
Now, Abraham had that relationship with Melchizedek. Melchizedek, because that relationship has blessings for you, has mentorship for you, has, it opens up your destiny. It opens up your destiny. So a lot of people do not have that. A lot of people do not have that. Now, let me share with you from the animal kingdom. Now, one of the things that this type of relationship does, it transforms a baby eaglet to an adult eaglet. And part of doing that means the mother eagle has to put the baby eaglet on his wings, fly out in the open and drop them. Now, some of my spiritual daughters and spiritual sons know that I have a PhD in dropping you in mid-air. And because that is, because there's no way you're going to learn how to fly except your wings are what? Your wings, you, you have to, because flying, to fly in the spirits, to fly in life, to rise up with wings as eagles, you have got to, you cannot learn this just in college. You have to feel it. So you have to be pushed. And guess what? Because there's a fear of falling, there's a fear of dying, you are not going to do it by yourself. You're going to have to be pushed. So I have a ministry of pushing. I, I want to speak to both of you so you can give examples of when I pushed you and you grew. I know you have many stories. So Pastor Wiener and Pastor David, give us one story of you being pushed and you going. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are plenty of stories that I can choose from, <laughs> um, but I guess one of the, the ones that come to mind is definitely my first time when I, I preached, the very first time. Now, for me, I never like to be in, in public or stand at a pulpit and preach or even say anything for that matter. I remember getting my first assignment and I was like, oh my, but just like a good mentor would and a spiritual father would, he pushed me out there and you know what? I didn't fall and die. I, I, I flew and I kept <laughs> flying. So in a sense, the fear alone would keep you in a particular position. And you know, supporter was like, you know, it's okay. You're not ready yet. No, no, no. The mentor will push you. And then you recognize what you can do. Amen. 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 Pastor Deidre. <laughs> mimi, 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 mimi. <laughs> pushes off the cliff I have had, but it has done me. It was for my it was my favor. Um, I remember our first encounter when you said the Lord said put me in. I blatantly asked you put me in where? And that was into ministry. I did not see myself doing it, but I'm thankful for how God has designed me that even if there is something to do that I don't like doing because I know that is for my good, I would do it. And that's how I started with ministry. You pushed me. And you actually said, the Lord said, if I don't put a demand on the grace of God in your life, you're not going to move. So I know that's your approach and that's how God pushes me. I'll continue to be pushed and fly on my way down. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Now, have you noticed that Samuel had to push Saul into his gifting. So the, the mentor or the father has an anointing to activate that in you. So they activate that in you. So that relationship is not always comfortable. So I want you to understand that relationship is not always comfortable. They will speak to you about things that you don't feel comfortable with. And they're not going to talk to you like a supporter. A supporter is that it's gonna be all right. Wow, what you shared was so powerful. But a, a mentor in your singing will say, you missed two keynotes. And everybody says, wow, you are awesome today. Wow, you are awesome. Awesome. Like 
First of all, Anita plays an instrument. So people say, wow, you are really great. My God, you are really, really great. The way you played, I felt the anointing. And you have some people who are your real supporters. They'll say, you, you are great. The people who are customers of your gift, but the people who are supporters, they'll say, you are great today. You really blessed us. I see you're really growing. And that's amazing. And a mentor will come and say, yeah, you did some things well, but you're a bit lazy with this note. And why did you not do more, I mean, with your instrument? I mean, why did you not do more? And you say, wow. So, so, so you can have one event and a supporter is saying one thing and a mentor is saying something different because their perspectives are different. Am I helping somebody? So you have some people who cannot, they say they want mentorship, but they cannot take a mentorship relationship because they're too sensitive and they want everybody to be friendly, friendly, body, body with them. No, that is not that type of relationship. The purpose of that relationship is to make you fly. The purpose of that relationship is to make you fly. And right now you need to do these things to fly. So a mentor of that type of relationship would speak to you with things you are not comfortable with. It will also speak to you about things you're comfortable with. They will also protect you, but that's the nature of the relationship. Okay, Pastor David, tell us if there are any questions. Any questions? I have no questions at this time. Okay. okay. So folks, if you have any questions, put them, hallelujah, share those questions. Now, I want to talk about a second type of relationship which is the supporter. Now, a supporter, supporters bring you comfort, they bring you encouragement, they also can bring you resources. Now, Jesus had those relationships. Now, those relationships were, there was a team of women, and let's really go into the scripture and I'll show you, because Jesus is our primary earthly example. And so we know that Jesus had a Samuel who activated the anointing in his life, who was John. Okay, we can see that, which is the first type of will. We see the second will, Jesus had supporters because guess what? Destiny is a battle. Life is a battle. So you need some supporters. There's some people, they have none of these four relationships but there's an anointing in this teaching. There's an anointing to cause spiritual alignment in these relationships of your life. And I decree the grace comes to you for alignment. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My, my, my. Oh, shit. Okay. My, my, my. So let's go into the word. We're going to look for Luke chapter 8, verse 3. Let's go for Luke chapter 8. Well, let's read from verse 1. It's a very deep scripture. And it came to pass, Luke chapter 8 reading from verse 1, and it came to pass afterwards that he went through every city and village, preaching and teaching the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Shuzana, of Shusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. So these were relationships. These women were not his mentors. These women were not his colleagues because the apostles were his colleagues. They did the work together. These women were supporters. They provided to Jesus of, the, of, his, of their substance. So these were the women that took care of the daily necessities. These were the women that cooked for the ministry. These are the women that washed clothes. These were the women that provided money 
to finance the ministry of Jesus. These were his supporters. So if Jesus had a team of supporters, do you have a team of supporters? God has, when God made you, God designed your supporters. God designed your, your Samuels, your mentors. And he has those for you. Now, there's some people, all they're suffering from is a lack of mentorship and so a, a lack of a spiritual father to open their destiny. And some people are suffering from a lack of TLC because tender loving care. Because supporters give you tender loving care. They care for you. Now, Jesus also had another set of supporters. He had a home that he would go to just to relax. Just to relax. And that's the home of who? Lazarus. Now, let's look at it. Let's go to John chapter 11, verse 8. John chapter 11, verse 5. John chapter 11, verse 5. Look at this story. It says, so you're looking at Jesus' relationship life. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So this was a friendship love. These were Jesus' supporters. And Jesus would go to their house and eat. Lazarus did not work in his ministry. Lazarus was not part of the team that Jesus went out and preached to and preached with. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary were supporters. And Jesus would go there sometimes and just eat. Martha would prepare food and Martha would, and Martha would come and say, Jesus, would you please speak to my sister? I mean, come on. We need, she needs to help me in the kitchen. Because you know we have these awesome meals. And she's sitting on your feet listening to you teach. She can listen after she's worked with me. You know, and so you have that dynamic. So these were supporters of Jesus. Now, to their people who, in their life, they have no supporters. There's nobody who would say, hey, come to my home and just relax. Just chill. And, you know, and people who think that they don't need those relationships. Jesus, Jesus showed you the relationships that are needed to fulfill destiny. Some of you are all cranky because you have no supporters. But God has supporters for you. And, you. and you need to know how to relate with them. Oh my goodness. Pastor Winita, let's, let's dissect this. Talk to me. Very interesting in the sense that just as it's important to have mentors, you need to have supporters. You need that sense of care, that same TLC that you spoke of, that tender, loving care. Everybody in life needs them. And when you're going on this destiny path, there are some bumps and humps in the road. And Absolutely. sometimes what fixes those kind of things are some people to come alongside and say it's going to be okay, to support you, to support you and encourage you. And not necessarily even in the sense of spiritually being, spiritually in a spiritual sense. It could be just going out, having some some downtime, going and go to the beach, those kind of things. But relationships are so very important because they give you a sense of, you know, relaxation. This, you know, a sense of you can you can do this. You can overcome certain things that are coming up against you. You can you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. The Lord has those people in your lives and in our lives, and we have to discern those people, and they're very 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 important. Um, Sometimes we may look at them as not a big deal, and it may not even be people that are in the sense of church or within our teams or within our, for us as pastors, but it could just be some average, average everyday people that God placed in our lives to really replenish us in those moments when we are, when we're tired and sometimes on the verge of giving up. So they're very, very important to understand that. Yeah. Though, see, Jesus had a place he went to for downtime that was Lazarus's house. <laughs> He may have had some other places, but the Holy Spirit yeah. records that one of Jesus' downtime places was Lazarus' house. And he, 
The Bible tells us that he loved Lazarus. He loved Martha. He mm -hmm. loved the sister. It highlights Martha. Now, do you know the interesting thing is the first person he describes of Jesus loving was who? Martha. And Martha was the one in the kitchen. <laughs> Martha was the one in the kitchen. And you could tell that Martha had the type of relationship with Jesus that she could come to Jesus and say, rebuke my sister. She needs a rebuke. She's lazy and she just sits at her feet. So you can tell Martha, the sister's name is not mentioned. He loved the sister, but Martha was right at the top. And he said, Martha, Martha, your sister has chosen the best thing right now, which will not be taken from her, which is the word of God. So that was Jesus' downtime zone. Now, do you have a place where you can just get some downtime? You know, so that's important. That's but now remember, this is not supporting you in the flesh. Because these three people were supporting Jesus in their what? In his what? Destiny. So the support is the support of comfort, the support of friendship, the support of resources. You all also have another team that provided Jesus with money for his ministry. Money for his project. Money. So the people who they will send you something, if you need anything in this area, I'll provide it for you. And that's the area. They are still your supporters. So you need support of comfort, support of care, support. Amen. Pastor Deidre, I know you have something. <laughs> Let's talk. A statement was actually made, but I'm going to ask it in the form of a question. Yes. Do um, you look for your supporters, one, and two, can it, what would stop you from being able to recognize them? You as an individual, your character, um, what would make you keep looking and not being able to find them? Okay. That's a really good question. Um, in fact, we're going to spend perhaps some more time later on describing because in order now, I'm teaching you this time about the different types of relationships. But then I've got to teach you the type of person you have to be to attract these relationships and to, to recognize these relationships and to successfully host these relationships because you have to recognize them and you have to host them. You have to recognize them and you have to host them. So some people are poor at recognizing, some people can recognize, but some people are poor at hosting. They're poor hostesses and hosts of divine relationship. So, so we need to talk about being a host. Now, when it comes to recognition, the first thing is not understanding the system, knowing that you even need to, there are even people call supporters. Then number two, you need to understand that when God sends somebody to support you, and, and there's a major problem too, your supporters and your mentors will not arise to the level they're supposed to until you are waking to who you are. Now, let me explain this. I'm gonna give, give you a story. One of the greatest women of God in the last 100 years is a lady called Amy Simple McPherson. She, she was an apostle evangelist who pioneered the Four Square Movement, which is a movement of churches around the world, of over a thousand churches around the world. So this is an apostolic woman who pioneered, and she walked in such grace and power, ministering to hundreds of thousands of people. Now, now this woman, she was married three times. Her first marriage, her husband died, and, he, and when he was a missionary. And then the second marriage, she got married after the husband had died, 
and she was in a roundabout because she had not answered her call to ministry because at that time it was very rare to have women preachers. And she was the first person to have a Christian radio station. This woman is a pioneer in all kinds of sense. And what she did, a man fell in love with her and married her, the man was a banker and he wanted her to be a housewife. And she was willing to be a housewife because guess what? She was at a, she was at a destiny roundabout, which means she did not fully know who she was. So sometimes it's difficult to recognize your supporters. It's difficult to recognize your mentors because you really have not figured out who you are. So you don't know who is really supporting who you are. So there were people who supported her in being a banker's wife. And being a banker's wife in that time was to be a good hostess, that when your husband will come and bring uh, people at home uh, for dinner, you will do well cooking, you will do well being a hostess. And the women who are wired for that, that is the type of destiny that they have. But this woman was an apostle to the nations. She was a church planter. She was an evangelist that led thousands of people to Jesus. She was a woman who had the anointing to raise the dead. Yet she was at home hosting parties and dinner parties for her husband's clients. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know what happened? It was fine in the beginning. But then she awakened and found out who she was. And when she found out who she was, she now wanted to fulfill that. And her husband, who was a supporter of her being a housewife, was no longer a supporter of her in her destiny. Wow. And people who supported her before in being the wife of a wealthy banker refused to support her in being an apostle and an evangelist that will shape America and be called the spiritual mayor of Los Angeles. So you see that because she did not know herself, people did not know her. So the husband thought he was getting a housewife, but he was not getting a housewife. He was getting a caterpillar in a cocoon that had not emerged. And when it emerged, it was a butterfly that he could not handle. <laughs> oh, am I helping somebody here? What I said is profound. Pastor Juanita and also Pastor David, I want you to come into this. Pastor Juanita, <laughs> That's deep. Wow. Identity is so very, very, very important. If you do not know who you are, you will misalign yourself in a direction that God did not put for you and ultimately connect yourself with relationships that were never meant to be because they're seeing the image of a particular person that may not necessarily know who they are. And then when it is too late, they find themselves in a position where they're the image of, uh, of something that is not true about themselves. And then they ultimately find what that truth is. And then it's a, it's a sense of confusion. That person doesn't even know, even in the same example that you just outlined just now, he didn't even know who he was marrying. He, did not he did not even know what, what he was. He didn't know, and that is so strange in a sense of, not in a negative way, but in a sense, so many of us may find ourselves in those particular positions. We don't even know who we are. And so even in our discerning of who those supporters and mentors may be in our lives, because those are the two relationships that we discussed today, they may be way off base on what God has for you, because you you don't even know who you are, and you're so out of a with God's path and God's will for your life. Very important to seek God's will concerning you, so you will know how to navigate in finding those people that are for you and connecting with those people that God placed in your life to bring the best version of yourself to pass. So that's very interesting. Identity is very important. Very, because that is the internal alignment. So think of it. Think of, of the line going up, vertical, and the line going down. But they meet at a base. The base at which they meet is you. And that, and that base needs to be aligned. That base. Otherwise, the 
horizontal line and the vertical line would miss each other. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The vertical line and the horizontal line will miss each other. And you will not have a perfect L. The perfect L is the alignment. They must connect at a base. That base where they connect is you. That's the you. They connect in you. That is the internal alignment. Mm. Pastor Deidre. <laughs> Awesome, Bishop. Indeed, awesome. Uh, what I can say for me is, and for persons that are listening, be okay when you find your identity and others don't understand it. Be true to yourself because sometimes when you have gone through your process and you begin to find yourself, some who were around you don't understand and you can easily morph back into who they are comfortable with when God is calling you to come out of that place. So it's just an encouragement that when you do find that person that God has called you to be, be okay with who you are and continue on the journey. You see, let me share with you something and then I should get ready to round up today. And Pastor Juanita, you can and so if anybody has any questions, send them now to Pastor Deidre because we're getting ready to wind up. Now, Jesus understood this principle. And this is what Jesus did. Jesus had a conversation with the disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? He was asking them, who do men say my identity is? They, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're Elias, some say you're one of the prophets. But he said, but who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Simon, Simon, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. What Jesus was saying is that even if you're going to have any intimate relationships, you need to ask them, who do you say I am? <laughs> because if that conversation had occurred, now that, that I knew this before I got married. So I asked my wife who she said I am. And my wife told me exactly who I was because God opened her eyes to realize this is who you're marrying. This is what I am. You see, who do you say I am? This is important. Who do you, so you see, you see, so if you don't get that, if these four categories of relationships, they do not know who you are, oh my God, you will have long relationship alignments. And that is when people get angry, there's relationship disappointment because obviously that man was very upset because he thought he had a housewife. <laughs> he didn't think he had a woman whose name would be in the history books. Thanks, fancy a woman who he built the first mega church in America in the during the depression. During the depression, the woman built a church of 5,000 members. Can that woman be a housewife? <laughs> that kind of woman be a housewife? Oh my god, no! And the woman, do you know what she used to do? Okay, during the depression, and she was dramatic. She was a dram she was a dramatic woman, and this is how she built her church. She would actually, in those days, okay, during the depression, I mean, there were no jobs, hardly any jobs, so a lot of people would line the street square, and this is what she would do. She would put on a dress, and she would take a chair go in the middle of the square, stand on the square and put her hands up like this and close her eyes. And people will gather, they will gather. They wonder, what is this woman doing? They will gather, they will gather, they will gather, they will gather. When she senses she has about 100 or 200 people gather, she will jump off the chair and start running. And the people will run behind her because <laughs> they had nothing to do. And she will run inside her church. And when she runs inside her church, she will run to the altar. And when all the people have gathered, 
the ushers will lock the door <laughs> and she'll preach to them and lead them to Jesus. That is the kind of woman the man married. Can you think that woman will stay silent at home? But here's the thing. When she married him, she was ready to do that. My God. She was ready to do that. She thought that is who she was. Now, could it be? That is why I tell people, do not marry until you know yourself. Or you won't know who you're supposed to marry. <laughs> do not marry until you discover yourself. Because it would be dishonest to the person. Because the person may think what they're getting is something else. And then in the middle of the marriage, you become something different. And they might accept it and go with it, or some may not be able to accept it and go with it. My, oh my, oh my. So, but before you can ask people, who do you say I am? You must know who you are. If a man comes to, if a, if a man says, tell me about yourself, or say, I like the flap, I like the color blue. Uh, I like fish and chips. Um, I don't like to be, I can be moody in the morning. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about who are you? Identity, what, let me explain what is identity because a lot of people ask me, what is identity? Identity, your identity, is the problem on earth is, is the problem on earth you are called to solve and who God made you to do it. So for me, for me, I am a representative of the greatness move of God. That's my identity. I was born to represent the greatness move of God. If, if my relationships do not know that, they will never understand me. I represent a greatness move of God. That's who I am. That is my identity. Your identity distinguishes you from any other person that has ever lived. Your identity is not I'm a black woman. Your identity is not I'm a black man. I'm a Bayesian. That's not your identity. I'm a Caribbean woman. That's not your identity. Say, I identify as a Caribbean woman. No. You're not. That's your ethnicity, your nationality. That's not identity. Identity is unique because your fingerprint is unique. Your eye print is unique. Your footprint is unique. Do you know who you are? Do you know what distinguishes you from every other person? Do you know who you are? Do you know who the man is getting? Who your supporters are supporting? Do you know what makes you different from another person? Do you know who you're genetically wired to be? Do you know the solution that you bring? Do you know that? These are the key questions of life. Who am I? If you don't know who am I, you will never know who is best for you. On this I rest. I finish module two. <laughs> Any questions, Pastor Deidre? And while you're looking for questions, Pastor Juanito. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, Bishop. <laughs> Wonderful teaching. It goes back to the fact of identity. Yes. We need to go to God and ask him, who am I? What he calls me to do? What is deposited on the inside of me? and go in the direction of that. There's a particular scripture that came to mind when you were speaking, is about seeking his kingdom first and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. In a sense, what it says is like a road and it's like a journey. If you walk on the path that God has the device for you, it's almost like a gravitational pull, like the particular people, your mentors, your supporters, everything will be drawn unto you to help you. Also recognizing that your mentors in your life that God will place in your life, you really got to discern, ask God where they are because they have something so, so important for you. And I, 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 I'm gonna speak personally, Bishop, you have become that for me in the sense of see the gold. And, you, and, and that is why I want our listeners to understand, you need to find someone that can see the gold inside of you and begin to, be, to allow yourself to, be, to, um, to come under that leadership 
to be for that person to extract that gold those diamonds that are on the inside of you and pull them out now people that are listening to us maybe they have supporters supporters are great but one of the things i've recognized even from your teachings your supporter will never put you straight in the sense of they will never urge you or come better and so clapping and supporting is great but you need that spiritual father those spiritual covering that that spiritual guider that god has for you you need that in your life in order to see your greatness emerge and i'm urging the people that are watching ask god to show you who those persons are that god has placed in your life bring out the best because we need them we need their teachings we need the guide we need their guidance it is so very very necessary and discovery of yourself is so important because you can be walking down a path and totally ignorant and i may be speaking to people out there they don't know who they are. They don't even have the understanding. And one of the things I pray for you today is that you will understand and get a revelation of what called you to be and walk in alignment with that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Pastor David, any questions? Um, I have a question for you. If you're mentoring someone and they get offended, do you walk away from them or should you go behind them? It really depends on the dynamic. Um, one, you need to understand if they understand your place in their life. Um, there are times, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's a very interesting dynamic because I'm going to teach about that much later on. But what I can share with you is that it's something that you're going to need a revelation from God on. Because there's a principle here. The mentee pursues the mentor. The mentor does not pursue the mentee. Mm. The mentee pursues the mentor. Mm -hmm. It was Elijah, it was Elisha that pursued Elijah. Elijah issued the call, but the pursuit is in the hand of the mentee. So the pursuit, the proof of your desire is your pursuit. The proof of passion is pursuit. So the people who have mentors, but they're very passive with their mentors. And they think we have the mentor or something. No, 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 no. Your mentor you have to pursue your mentor. I have to pursue my mentor. My mentor pursues his mentor. And his mentor pursues his mentor. <laughs> it's the pursuit. It's a pursuit. Jesus pursued John. John didn't pursue Jesus. Jesus went to John. <laughs> John didn't say, come, let me anoint you. No. Jesus went to John. So it's a, a pursuit. So in terms of the rule, mentors do not pursue mentees. You say, well, my mentor has called me. Huh? You, you better call. <laughs> you better call. You, you, you better understand the system. You see this, you need to understand that there's a system. This is how the system is set up. The system is set up that the mentee pursues the mentor. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Now, let me share something with you as we get ready to close. There's some of you saying, this thing is so spiritual. Have you know it's so complicated? No. It's not as complicated as you think. Because the people who helped develop the English language understood exactly what we were saying. They, they, they created a word, and the word is called relationship. Relationship comes from two words. Ship being the defining word, and relate. The word relationship means two people or group of people who are on the same ship, going in a similar direction. And because they're on the same ship, going into a similar direction, they relate with one another. Now, how do you know when two people are going on the same ship? 
when they have similar identities. The identity of my pinky finger is different from this finger, but it is related. So all my fingers have different identities, but guess what? They're related and they're related to the hand. But guess what? My finger is not related to my liver. <laughs> in fact, my finger and my liver are not in the same shape. <laughs> my finger and my liver are not in the same shape. But my thumb and my finger are in the same shape. So they can relate. They can do what? Relate. So what relationship means is that you can only truly relate on a deep level when you are in the same space, in the same realm, in the same room of identity. But it is difficult for a leopard to relate with a rabbit because they are not in the same space. So that's where you get the word relationship, partnership, friendship. There is one common word there, ship. That means you need to be in the same space. And the same space going on the same journey of life. That is why there are businesses that relate with one another. Like we have a business, I have business partners, because guess what? The, the direction of the business that we're going, their direction, we are on the same what? The identities of our businesses are similar, even though our businesses are distinctly different, but there is a commonality in them. So what I'm sharing with you is not some deep thing that I took from outer space, no, that I took from the deepest of the heavens, no. In the lowest level on earth, it is very clear in the word relationship. But then you have two people who are on two different ships who actually get married. Obviously, the ship will, will crash. <laughs> okay, let's have some last words. Last words from Pastor Juanita and last words from Pastor Deidre. And then we're going to pray for people to discover their identity. Amen? Last words from you. And it's been great having you on the show. Thank you, Bishop, for your word today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bishop, today for your teaching. Um, I know we were only able to do two or make mention of two specific relationships, but I'm hoping that our listeners, as much as I as well, because this information has been a good reminder for me, that it is so very important to understand yourself, identity. You said you made a mention of the fact before taking on major um, undertakings, like for example, marriage, it is very essential and it's very important to know who you are and God has destined you to be because you may find yourself in a bit of an issue attracting the wrong kind of individuals in your life that God never intended for you to, do, to have in your life. And really identifying and connecting with these two particular relationships, like indeed we spoke about the mentor as well as the supporter because two of these particular relationships are essential and very important you know as we navigate in the direction for it in our destinies so i just want i guess all of us here to really be praying and asking god to show us who those people are and that we will align ourselves with them and we will submit ourselves especially to our mentors because you made one mention of something that was very important the mentee is the one that goes after the mentor the other way around looking for someone to come draw us but we need to go and draw from them what we need to go forward so yes thank you bishop amen 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 i will share something with on this this is such a important concept in being able to grasp this when it comes to relationships is that in relationships you have got to understand that as you said, in a mentorship relationship, you draw, you draw. So water does not flow upwards. There has to be a pool to pull it downwards. You see that? You pour from up down. 
Mm. And so you need to draw. So there's a there's a drawing that's required for mentorship relationships. Now there's a phrase that people use. They, they say, we were friends in school, but we grew apart. We I am going to church, but as I'm growing, we're going because guess what? At a particular level, you're all caterpillars, you're at a particular level, you have not, you're at egg stage, you have not hatched. When you hatch, if you take a penguin egg, you take a chicken egg, you take a turkey egg, and you put them all together in one place, they all just look like eggs. <laughs> and except you're egg expert, you may not know the difference between a penguin egg, chicken egg, and a turkey egg. You might go and fry a turkey egg. <laughs> I don't know what fried turkey looks like. I don't know. I don't know the fried turkey egg. I have no idea. But I, I want to stick with, with uh, chicken. Okay. And you have these eggs. So they all look like eggs. But when they hatch, whoo, you will know there's a difference here. You will know there's a difference. So sometimes when you have not hatched and the person you're with has not hatched, I, it is very different to discern. But after you hatch, it's very clear. So that's why people go apart because they are together as eggs. But when they hatch, they saw one was a penguin and one was a turkey. <laughs> and and, they, and as they grew, they grew apart. Am I helping somebody? Pass the daydream. Mm. Bishop, I'm going to take this opportunity to with the question so i'm giving way to a question i think is one that a lot of us need to hear and that question is what if you don't know your identity but your potential spouse has the key to help you unlock and cultivate it should you put that relationship on hold until you discover who you are wow what a lot of questions now the discovering of identity is not something that takes a year. God does not take a year to show somebody their identity. Your identity can be known very quickly if you know what to ask. So it is now obvious to me that we need to do a session on identity. So because of this question, I am going to do a session on identity. It may not be this week, but certainly next week. We're definitely going to do a session on identity. And we may do one on Friday. Let's see. Let's see how the Holy Ghost leads us. But so that question, that question has now caused me, led by the Spirit, to do one whole session to answer their question. Okay? So Pastor Lady, you will be with me. And what I'm sensing in my spirit is that on Friday, we're gonna have a grand. So Pastor Benito, you're joining me on Friday. Pastor Sean is doing Thursday. <coughs> Pastor Anne-Marie is doing Wednesday. And on Friday, I'm having all of you together. On Friday, we're gonna talk about identity. The vertical relationship. So your question will be answered on Friday. So hold that for Friday. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's pray. Amen. In the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a woman who is under the affliction of depression. And at the core of your depression is the insecurity and the inferiority and you're feeling not adequate. But here's the story, everybody's adequate for what they were born to do and who they were born to relate with. Could it be that you're aligned wrongly and you're trying to be a, a great toilet seat on a dinner table? I don't care if you are a golden toilet seat, if you're on a dinner table, you will be rejected. 
because you're in the wrong place and you're relating with the wrong people. And the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you that the reason for your rejection, the reason for what has happened is because you did not fit where you are. But everybody knows how wonderful it is to have a great toilet seat. And if it's a comfortable toilet seat, ooh, even better. If it's a luxury toilet seat, ooh, even better. It is awesome to have a wonderful toilet seat. We praise the Lord for it. So you have a place where you fit. And that is the reason why the issues that have happened in your life, because you're trying to make yourself fit where you do not fit. And today, right now, the anointing is touching you right now. And when I'm seeing you in the spirit, I'm seeing that you wear glasses. Now, there's more than one person that this is actually touching what I'm saying. But there's a specific woman, you're slim and you wear glasses. You wear glasses, you wear glasses, you wear glasses. You're slim, you wear glasses. You're trying to fit where you do not fit. You're trying to push yourself where you do not fit. You're trying to be celebrated where you're only tolerated. Now, if they don't throw the toilet seat away on the dinner table because it's golden, it's because they're tolerating it. They'll never celebrate it. So I am speaking to you right now. I command the spirit of depression to leave you. Lift your hands right up. I command the spirit of depression to leave you right now. I command that downness that comes in you, that inferiority and insecurity that comes in you in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I'm now seeing women. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five women. They appear in front of me. And I'm seeing them very insecure about their body type. Here's the thing, every woman should maximize their body type. But let me tell you, your body type is not celebrated by every man type, every male type. Because God created women with different body types. And stop trying to force your body type on a man that doesn't like your body type. And stop getting insecure. Stop trying to do all kinds of stuff. Because here's the thing. Men like that, and let me tell you, women, there is no ideal body type. It doesn't exist. Now, there is what the Bible calls beauty. The Bible talks about a woman who is beautiful in form and appearance. That's a woman who has been given the gift of physical beauty. But apart from the gift of physical beauty, there are different body types. And there are men who gravitate and like different body types. So let me share with you, do not get into insecurity and trying to fit your body into your body type and feeling so insecure, feeling so this thing, feeling inadequate, feeling this thing and ending up in jealousy and envy and all kinds of things. No, 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 no. It's time to be set free. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing to set you free in the name of Jesus, amen. Men, I'm speaking to you. You cannot lead a woman if you don't know who you are. You cannot lead a woman properly if you don't know who you are. A man who doesn't know his identity will find it difficult to lead a woman because you'll be insecure and you have to uh, overcompensate for your insecurity. So I'm releasing an anointing for all the men, all my sons, all the men who watch this ministry, all the men that you will grab your identity in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing for the revelation of your identity in the name of Jesus. Because there's a man under the sound of my voice. You have a divine relationship with a woman who knows who she is, but you don't know who you are. And because you don't know who you are and she knows who she is, it creates insecurity in you. The answer is not to try and dampen down and put uh, uh, water on her fire because that would be you get in trouble with God because God put the fire in her. The answer would be you. The answer would be you fulfilling your destiny. You discovering your identity. So you become a strong man in your identity and she can help you. 
Don't say she's not helping you. How can she help you when you don't know who you are? You don't know. She doesn't know what type of help you need. So do not get on her case. The problem is you. Go find out who you are. Go discover who you are. And then she will know how to be who she needs to be to you. I just fixed a situation. Right now, my son received that anointing. Come out of that state. Come out of that mental state. Come out of that vindictive state and let the spirit of Lord, because you're grumbling on the inside. You're not grumbling too much on the outside because uh, if you grumble too much on the outside, um, there will be an embargo in the bedroom. So you don't want an embargo in the bedroom. I'm just, I'm a prophet, I'm seeing your situation. So to tell you that I know who you are, I can see you in the spirit. So you're not grumbling too much, lest there be bedroom sanctions but you're grumbling on the inside. No, don't grumble on the inside. The woman is doing what she was born to do. Do you understand? Do you know she was not born to be your husband? She was born to be your wife. She was born to do her assignment and you are part of her destiny team. And she's assigned to help you, but you don't know who you are. So how does she know how to help you? So don't get on her case internally and rebuke her internally and have an attitude internally, but act nice out, outside because you don't want bedroom sanctions. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the anointing touch you right now. And I decree right now that a, a realm open and your identity is revealed to you. Who you are is revealed to you. Not who you want to be, but who you really are. And you tell your wife and she celebrates you and a new and a great union begins. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. Wow, I am seeing in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, a tray. Let's be praying together. Let's be praying together. For the Spirit of God is saying to me that that brother, that he is going to quench the thirst of people through this series that we're doing. And many lives are going to be transformed and changed. So make sure you share these videos and make sure you let the world know your world of influence, get in touch with this wisdom in the name of Jesus. Shalom, we love you and see you tomorrow. And we all will be back together on Friday. So, Pastor, we need to say goodbye. Pastor David, say goodbye. And as we all declare at the end, our greatness shall not be hid. So, Pastor, we need to say goodbye. Bye. Pastor David. Goodbye, everybody. And we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, 12 30. Amen. And everybody, your greatness. greatness shall not greatness. be hidden. Let's say my no. greatness. My greatness shall my not greatness. be hidden. My greatness shall not be hid. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. And, oh, I forgot. Remember, remember tomorrow in the evening, my wife has ticket by force prayer meeting. And on Wednesday, we have our conference. Ooh, we have our conference on Wednesday. And uh, we have our conference on Wednesday, on Thursday and Friday at seven o'clock. And we have been having epic times in the online deliverance. Have we have not been having epic times? Most so definitely. People have been delivered in their homes. Yep. People have been falling under the power in their homes and staying under the power until, and, and staying under the power in their bed, visitations of God, angels in their house, almighty miracles are happening in people's mm -hmm. houses, in people's lives, through this prophetic online deliverance. There, I, I told my wife today, I said, this is a special anointing. The anointing that I used to minister mm -hmm. In prophetic deliverance of Zoom is a different anointing. I was telling my wife, different anointing. And so we have another session on Thursday. Make sure you don't miss it. And everyone will have a theme, but we're still on the theme of foundational deliverance. And we'll look to create another one. Amen? To make sure that everybody that needs to be delivered gets delivered before we announce the next set of prophetic deliverances. I was born to get people from bondage to greatness. And let me tell you, woo! I'm on fire for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. 